It's been a while since I made my last weapon tier list, and the game has changed a lot since then. We've got a whole new camera angle, movement has changed a bit, enemies have changed a bit, and of course there are a bunch of new weapons. So the time has come to do it again and talk about the worst weapons you need to avoid, the good weapons that'll help you succeed, and the absolute best weapons that'll lead you to victory. Starting off, unfortunately we've got the worst of the worst. The E tier, these weapons all suck, no other way to put it. Lots of wooden weapons, starter weapons, some really short weapons, and the thing they've all got in common is that they just don't do enough damage to be any good. There are a few new weapons here, the two cudgels and the strong hammer. They all do 14 damage, which isn't a lot, the cudgel's also really small, which I don't like, and the other two are a bit longer, obviously, since they're two-handers, but for me, 14 damage isn't enough out of any weapon, let alone a two-hander. So this tier, it's just not good at all, avoid these weapons, and if you are stuck with one of them, try to upgrade as soon as you can. Moving on, we've got the slightly less terrible D tier. There are actually a few interesting and or usable weapons here. Not my first or even second choices, but usable. A couple weapons here, the reinforced Puku and the small hammer, do 22 damage, which is enough to make them kinda decent early on. Unfortunately, they're also two of the smallest weapons in the game, and I really don't like small weapons. On the other hand, you've got one of the longest weapons, the wooden sparring stacka. The sheer length of this thing makes it kinda decent because you can just hit people without them really being able to hit you back. We've also got the first of the flails on this tier. I'll talk more about flails in a bit, but basically I don't like how unreliable they are, and this one doesn't even have good stats, so it's just pretty bad. There are a few new weapons to talk about in this tier too. The rusty battle pick, it's a bad version of a good weapon that we'll talk about later. At 16 damage, that's still a bit lower than I'd want if I'm using a two-hander, but it's okay in the first few weeks. Same goes for the Awaken Bone Daka, there's a much better version of this weapon, but but this one's alright at the start. The fishing stacka, like the sparring stacka, is only good in that it's a spear. This one doesn't even have great length, but it still lets you poke people pretty safely. And finally, the copper kaffa, another bad version of a good weapon. It just doesn't quite do enough damage to be a legit option. It's okay, but I'd still upgrade as soon as I could. Alright, that's it for the really bad weapons. Now we're gonna look at some weapons that are actually decent, the kind of weapons I would actually buy to replace the weapons from the previous tiers. Some of the weaker versions of weapons I actually like are here, the lower damage straight swords like the Falchion and the Haney and Daka. They're solid weapons, just nothing special. The Iron Daka is an interesting one. It's now a hybrid like the Tradica. You can use it one or two-handed, but it only does 18 damage, which isn't a lot for a two-hander, so I'd consider it to fit in around here with the lower damage one-handed swords. There are a couple new swords, the Sickle and the Lafosi Cleaver, both a little more funky in their shape. Their damage is still just okay though, and they're both on the shorter end. A whole bunch of Chakas are on this tier, the basic one as well as the three new ones, the Linoleon, Lafosi, and Awaken. To me, they all feel pretty much the same. The damage is decent on a couple of them, but they're just too short, the axe heads are too small, and basically I'd rather use a sword. And then we have a couple more flails. Like I mentioned on the last tier, I hate how unreliable they are. The unwieldy trait makes them get disarmed at a ridiculous rate, and the last thing I want is to have to go pick my weapon up 10 times a fight. Their stats aren't bad, and they'd be pretty useful if they weren't so unreliable, but they just are. There are a couple new two-handers on this tier, the Raider Chaka and the Flesh Hook. The Raider Chaka is decent as a big axe. I wish it was a two-handed axe instead of a polearm, because then you could swing it both ways. It would be higher on this list if it was, but polearms are so limited, only being able to swing one way. Same with the flesh hook. It's actually not bad. It's got good damage when you consider the base number as well as the bonus versus unarmored. Really, it's just the fact of being a polearm that holds it back. Then you've got another underwhelming two-hander, the Quelly Daka. To me, it just doesn't do enough damage as a two-hander. I don't love two-handed swords anyway. I think they're just not quite good enough at going past shields compared to two-handed axes and this one's just not even as good as the other swords. We're going to see a lot more of them on the next tier, but first I have to mention the Iron Claw. Great weapon, as long as it doesn't break. Because you almost need to have insurance to actually use it, especially in the mid or late game, I just can't put it higher on this list, but it is really good at what it does. And the last weapon on this tier is in a similar situation, but it actually occupies an even smaller niche. The Throwing Pilly. No longer is it the insurance slaying spear that it once was, it only does 15 damage, it still has 3 durability, and you can't even really attack normally with it anymore. And yet, under the right circumstances, it can do enough damage to kill someone with 2 or 3 throws. That being said, it's also a lot better early on when enemies don't have as much armor, and it's still not a weapon that you're actually going to buy and use week in and week out, which is why it's not higher on the list. But it definitely has enough power in the moments you'll use it to be here around the middle of the list. And now for the B tier, this is where the weapons start to get pretty good. These are weapons that you can have a lot of success and maybe even win a run with. Yes, there are still better weapons, and I'd upgrade from these if I have the coin, but if I get stuck with one of these, it's not so bad. Like I mentioned, you'll see lots of two-handed swords here, even the Hanian Clava. 
After the first tier list, lots of people disagreed with it being so low, but to me it just isn't that special. It does do a lot of damage, it's got great durability, and it's very long, but I just don't ever love using two-handed swords. I'd rather use a one-handed sword with a shield, I'd rather use two-handed axes, spears, even some maces or pole arms. That being said, while we're talking about the swords, the Clava is definitely the best of them. The two-handed Talisdaka and the Oaken Twin Bone Sword are also among the best ones. They've got good stats, and like the Clava, they can stab with which can come in handy. We've also got a bunch of the one-handed swords here, and the spike club, because I pretty much consider that a sword. They're all good, really solid and steady, they just don't quite excel at anything. But ever since they tweaked the way enemies react to you with their shields, I found it easier to swing around them with straight one-handed weapons, which was the main thing holding these swords back before. The two talisdakas are included here, and I had a tough time deciding whether to put them here or on the next tier. They're really long, which I always see as a bonus, and they have really solid stats, but there just isn't quite enough separating them from the other swords swords on this tier. They were at their best when you could just spam overhead attacks without a care in the world, but since that's not as effective anymore, neither are they. Still really solid, just not quite as good as the ones we'll see on the next tier. A couple more one-handers really quickly, the Tenderizer and the Myrodin Militia Mala. These two aren't my favorites because they're both a little short and they have really small heads, so you have to be really accurate, otherwise you won't land good hits. But if you do land your hits, they do really good damage, so overall they're not too bad. Another bunch of weapons we've got here on this tier are the two-handed maces, including the new Bong Mala and the Long Spike Club. These weapons are good, they do lots of damage, I just don't love the shape on some of them, not as much as two-handed axes at least. The pole arms among them also suffer from the limited attack options. The Iron Spike Mala, for example, with 46 damage would easily be A tier or maybe even S if it could swing both ways, but as is, I can't really get on with it. Another pole arm that I like but don't quite love is the Prophet Scythe you get from the Week 4 boss. Good damage, nice shape, it hooks around shields pretty well, it just doesn't swing both ways. The durability can also be a little bit of an issue as you get deeper into a run. One weapon that does swing both ways is the new double-bladed Chaka. I like two-handed axes a lot, and this one's no exception. It's just not quite as good as the ones that are going to come up next, but this is a good weapon and one of my favorites on this tier. Rounding out the tier, you've got a few spears. Spears are really good in general, and these ones are only this low because they don't quite do the damage that some of the others do. And finally, I want to mention the Myrodin Helioflaga. This is a pretty good weapon, and I wouldn't be surprised if this is a ranking a lot of people disagree with. I love that this one doesn't get disarmed all the time, like the other flails, but it's still just a little too unpredictable and unnecessarily hard to use. Maybe I could just use some more practice, but ease of use is something I consider when making this list, so if I could just use a sword and achieve a similar or better result with less effort, I don't really see a reason to use this weapon. Next up is the A tier. These are the really good weapons in the game, probably the weapons you'll end up using a lot of the time, and all more than good enough to get victories with. So to start, we've got most of the spears in the game. They're all pretty similar in their stats, and the spear playstyle is just so good. Having great range, always being able to get around shields, and having your own shield means you don't really have any weaknesses. The Awaken Twin Spear boss weapon is especially good, and it can be a great weapon to completely carry you through a run. Next we've got another weaker version of a better weapon, but this one is still really good in its own right. The Bronze Bardiche, one of the most cost-efficient weapons in the game, it's got great stats and it's just a really effective weapon all around that only costs a few thousand coins. We've also got a couple of the original two-handers on this tier, the Heavy Hammer and the Iron Double Chaka. I actually had them in the S tier last list, but I decided it was time to downgrade them. They're still incredible weapons, they do great damage and they have great stats, but I'm going to sound like a broken record here and tell you that they're pole arms, and as such they're a little too limited and just not quite as easy to use as the absolute best weapons. Last but not least, we've got some of my favorite one-handed swords. Again, I just like how simple and steady one-handed swords are in this game. And these are just my favorite ones. The Kaffa and the Damori Daka both have a nice shapeliness to them that makes them a little better suited to hitting around shields. The Taskmaster's Claw boss weapon is essentially an iron claw with its one weakness addressed, so what's not to love there? It might even be on the next tier if its durability was even higher. And the very last weapon I want to talk about on this tier is another honorary sword, the new Damori Bong Mala. Just looking at it, I didn't expect to really like this weapon. One-handed maces aren't really my favorite, and this one's pretty short too, but it just feels good to me. It's got a bigger head than most of the other maces, and that makes it easier to land hits. It does good damage, and it has good traits too, so a bit of a weird one, but I really like it. And finally, we have the peak. The best of the best, the S tier. These weapons are as close to perfect as you're gonna get. They have great stats, they're really good for pretty much everything, and they're really easy to use too. There are a lot of new entries here, so let's take a look. 
Starting with the three one-handed weapons that are essentially different reskins, Triumph, Maladorn, and Vultura. Basically take your pick, do you like swords, maces, or axes? Whichever one you choose, it's going to do a ridiculous amount of damage and also be really good at everything else. And while we're talking about one-handed weapons, let's take a look at the new curved Lofosi Daka. This sword is so, so good. The hooked blade, the length, the damage. I'd even consider it to be at least as good, if not better than Triumph, because of how long it is. You can get around shields so easily with it, it gets so much speed, and it's also so easy to get. It's not expensive for a weapon of this caliber, and it drops from a boss fight. One of my favorite new weapons for sure. And now we've got a whole bunch of two-handers to take us home. Well, kind of. Let's talk about spears first, since they kind of count as both. The Feridaka has some friends on this tier now. Imperius, which, I mean, look at it, it's obvious why it's here. And the Linoleum Heavy Staka. I wasn't sure if I want to put this one on the A tier or include it here, but it's just a little too good not to be. Plenty of damage and the bonus versus armor means that it'll do really good consistent damage even before you break someone's armor, pretty much putting it right on par with the Feridaka. And that's what it's all about with these three spears. The damage they do is just insane when you think about all the advantages spears already give you. Normally it's kind of a trade-off with a spear, it doesn't do quite as much damage as other weapons, but not with these guys. We've only got a couple groups of weapons left now, starting with the two-handed axes. I've pretty much been saying it throughout the list, they're my favorite class of weapon, and any one of these will absolutely dominate. Let's start with the Great Chaka, and pretty much its younger, more attractive sibling, the Battle Chaka. Now the Great Chaka actually still does slightly more damage, but the Battle Chaka is every bit as good, and it's got that obnoxiously big head that pretty much never misses. Both of these things have incredible length and are so smooth going around shields, which other than damage is really the most important thing to me. So in addition to being two of the best weapons, they're really two of the most satisfying as well. Then you've got the two newer bronze ones, the Hefty Bronze Chaka and the Great War Pick. These two actually do more damage than the other two they just trade a bit of length, but they've still got the same great shapes that let you swing in behind a shield effortlessly and they make short work of even the toughest enemies. And finally, the last group of weapons includes the one I believe to be the absolute best weapon in the game, but first let's talk about the final unique boss weapon, Morthos's Chaka. This thing is incredible for how early you get it. A two-hander that does top tier damage, has great durability, shape, length, everything. And it can stab, which is so important for this type of weapon because you can use it to attack the left side of the shield and avoid the typical limitation of a polearm. It's pretty much the same moveset as the weapon I mentioned before, the single best weapon in the game, the Bardiche. I mean, what else? The thing does 48 damage, it swings so nicely around shields, it stabs just as nicely around the other side. It's really not that expensive either for what it is. Like seriously, don't even bother with the Thundaka. It's insanely good too, obviously, but it's like four times the price. Just get yourself a Bardiche and absolutely annihilate anything that comes your way. And that's that. There are a lot of weapons in this game now, but if you you didn't know before, now you know which ones are the best and which ones just aren't. So let me know what you think, if you agree with the rankings, if I disrespected your favorite weapon. If I did, I'm sorry, but I like what I like, you know? Anyway, that's enough out of me, so thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you later.